Recently in the tech space, there has been some huge news for the RX 9070 XT, in particular from a channel called Hardware Unboxed, who is renowned for being one of the biggest benchmarking channels in the tech space. And so when I heard there was on average a 9% increase in performance at 1440p since release day for this GPU, I just had to cross check this data because it would make it so that the RX 9070 XT is just now the best recommendation for 1440p and even 4K period. Now, before we get into the video, the test system that we're using here is the Ryzen 7 9800X 3D. We've got some 6,000 megahertz CL26G skill memory, as well as using a 990 Pro SSD from Samsung. Now, the SSD is pretty important for today's video because I believe it's going to point out some differences that could explain why the numbers in today's videos here at Tekka City are perhaps different from hardware and box is numbers, where we'll start off with some of the biggest gains that they saw, with Counter-Strike 2 posting a massive 23% at 1440p. Now this was done at medium quality settings, and when we locked in these settings, I did notice that there was an FSR upscaling, which you do want to disable because you are going to then get into the realm of testing apples and oranges, especially if there was an FSR update, but what we did here was just 100% screen res at 1440p, which is what I would assume Hardware Unbox would be doing. And keep in mind, I have reached out to him a couple of days ago with a direct message. I tried tagging him on a post just to try and get some video footage of where he tested on the map and how he tested exactly. But ultimately, I'm just waiting on a response here. It looks like I've been ghosted. But here's where at Counter-Strike 2 at 1440p, when we tested the review day drivers, versus the latest drivers to be released, we saw a 0.8% gain. I think it was about three FPS at 1440p. And then at 4K medium settings, we saw identical FPS. Meaning that the driver updates here, it came down to variance. I could probably run CS2 10 times and I'd get roughly the same FPS across the two different driver sets for this game. Meaning that the drivers effectively made no difference for getting a performance uplift in Counter-Strike 2. Now, one thing to point out here is that review date drivers are different generally to even release date drivers. And this is where you can actually get your hands on a copy of review date drivers, so to speak. And this is done via Windows 11 IoT. At least this is the test system we use here. If you use the default install, it actually carries a driver that dates back to the 12th of February in 2025. And this is essentially the same review date driver that a lot of press was given on the reviews before they were released to the public this year. So if you do wanna test these numbers for yourself, you can get these drivers and then just let Windows IoT install the default drivers and you can test on those. And then you can get into the games with the latest drivers and also test the before and after. The next game that screams some massive gains from Harbour Unbox was Spider-Man Remastered, where they got a 27% increase in performance at 1440p, very high quality settings. When we cross-check these numbers here, we saw effectively a 0% gain at 1440p. Now keep in mind, we're just testing the exact same area of the map just to keep things consistent. And then when we moved up to 4K as well, we saw virtually a 0% performance increase with 140 versus 141. So we saw a slightly higher FPS number on the review date drivers at 1440p, but then at 4K we saw 141 versus 140. So pretty much balances itself out here, coming down to variance between benchmark runs and with Spider-Man Remastered, things like the population and the cars in the scene are always going to be different between benchmark runs. But in this case, it will never get to the stage where we're testing the same area and finding ourselves to get a 27% increase in performance. Now, after seeing these numbers, it would lead me to believe that something is perhaps wrong with the test system at Hardware Unbox. Perhaps they had a problem when they were testing the games back a few months ago, and now they've fixed those problems and they're getting the performance as it should be. But let's keep testing these games with the side-by-side -side footage right after today's video sponsor. Do you need to get Windows 10 or Windows 11 activated and don't want to spend $200 or some other exorbitant price? Well, if so, today's video sponsor, VIP SCD Keys, has you covered. For as little as $15 using the coupon code BFTYC, you can get Windows 10 activated. For a little bit more, you can get Windows 11 activated too. Links in the description below to find out more. 
Next up here, we've got Hogwarts Legacy, and at both 1440p and 4K, we did see a minimal difference here in the numbers. In fact, I did see slightly lower 0.1% lows with the latest driver from AMD. So there was effectively really no big difference for Hogwarts Legacy. Moving on to a game where Hardware and Box did say they would have to attribute this performance increase to the drivers. This was Plague Tale Requiem. We effectively saw here a 0% increase at 1440p and 4K, which means that again, just like we said in the intro, there would have had to have been something potentially wrong with their test system for them to be getting different results a few months ago versus now where the game hasn't received a game update, nor has the drivers increased the performance at least from the testing that we're seeing here. The one to a game that did see some performance increase here, this was Delta Force, where at 1440p we went from 193 average FPS all the way up to about 218. But then I decided also to test 4K and we went from 106 to 117. So effectively about a 13% increase at 1440p and then over a 10% increase at 4K which makes it so that it's a healthy gain just from drivers alone. Which for this game, since we did see a significant increase in performance from drivers alone, I decided to test the RTX 5070 Ti on this particular title. However, I found it to still be beating the 9070 XT at both 1440p and 4K. So Delta Force showed that there was a significant increase for AMD just from drivers alone. But then if we look at the 5070 Ti, that's still beating the 9070XT in this title at 1440p and 4K. And so when we look at Harbour Unbox's numbers, they're showing it beating the 5070Ti. And this is where I'd like to get to the point of where exactly did they test? Because that's important for me to ultimately, if, or if others want to cross check their numbers and make sure they're hundred percent, we need to know where they tested on the map. Because from the little footage that I see in the video, it looks like they've been testing in multiplayer games and if so, not going to be able to replicate that at all in terms of getting a complete one-to-one -one run and giving out accurate information. And you may be wondering at this stage, why is this important? Well, the easiest example to give you guys is if you're benchmarking one card and that person's looking up at the sky, they're going to get much higher FPS as opposed to another benchmark where say they're going through a whole battle. It's just going to be a complete misrepresentation of the card's performance. And I'm not saying that they've done that. All I'm saying is I don't know anything that they've done at their setup or their testing because they don't give the information out. On to the next title, here's Cyberpunk 2077. And here's where at 1440p, we didn't see, unfortunately, any uplift in performance, nor did we see at 4K an uplift in performance. And this was done at the starting area of Cyberpunk 2077, Phantom Liberty on the corporation, where you can jump in a car and just drive through the city. And then on to Call of Duty Black Ops 6. Here's where we loaded up the first mission in the campaign. And Hardware Unbox, I believe, saw a big difference here at 1440p. Unfortunately, we didn't see a difference at 1440p nor 4K on the extreme settings. And this first mission, you do get into a lot of action straight away with a squad. So it is pretty intense. Then on to the next game here, Stalker 2. And this is a game that did see not in terms of a performance uplift, but a massive stability increase where it didn't crash once after the latest drivers. But on the review date drivers, this game was just constantly crashing to the point where it was so hard for me to get a benchmark run done. What I actually had to do was put an FPS limit in eventually and then get to the scene where I wanted to test to and then unlock the FPS limit and just hope that the game didn't crash by the 30 second mark when I was finished benchmarking. But in this case, we did get some numbers for the performance here. You can see the 0.1% lows are quite a bit higher at both 1440p and 4K, but the actual average FPS is very similar. However, of course, the stability just makes it so it's so much better to update your drivers to the latest drivers. Then to the last title here, Space Marine 2. And here's where we saw an uplift in performance of 1440p and 4K. And if we contrast that to the NVIDIA side of the fence, we actually didn't see an uplift in performance on the 5070 Ti. So it was roughly about a 5% increase in performance on Space Marine 2, updating your drivers for this game. Now this leads us all to the averages on these games. Now keep in mind, I did pick the games 
out of the video that Hiram Run Box did where they saw the gains. So they saw big gains and then I decided to cross check those. And what we got was on average at 1440p, a basically just under a 2% uplift. I think it was 1.9% at 4040p and at 4K it was 1.6%. So this ends up being much different to the 9% increase in performance that Hardware Unbox saw at 1440p and then the 4% increase that Hardware Unbox saw at 4K. And so another thing is too, they did show in Space Marine 2, there was a 63% improvement for the NVIDIA card. However, when I contacted NVIDIA, because they said they confirmed this with NVIDIA, when I contacted NVIDIA and asked them if they did confirm this bug, because I had never seen it in my testing, they said that they had received a complaint from Hardware Unbox, but they could not replicate the conditions and the drops that Hardware Unbox was seeing. So there's a big difference between telling the public that you've confirmed something with NVIDIA as opposed to them acknowledging your complaint. Then now it's time to talk about a conclusion with these numbers that we saw here today. And unfortunately I couldn't replicate the huge gains that Hardware Unbox saw, but one thing I will say is always update your graphics card drivers to the latest drivers. You're gonna get especially stability fixes, which we saw here, one of the nine games that we tested was just simply unplayable before the driver update. But then after the driver update, it was then smooth and it was not crashing at all. That was Stalker 2. Delta Force still a legitimate increase in FPS as well as Space Marine 2. So there are some benefits in terms of performance, but in terms of the blanket 9% performance uplift across 16 games, I decided to cherry pick the nine games that they would have seen an even higher uplift in performance in. And unfortunately I saw much lower uplifts in performance. Anyhow, the final thing we're gonna talk about here is the tech media. And a lot of tech media just reposted this without even cross-checking it themselves. And in particular, I'm gonna call out tech power up here. You guys are more than capable of checking these numbers for yourselves. I know that. And I've met you guys at, for instance, events like Computex and stuff. And you're always telling me you're benchmarking and you're testing things. So I'm just surprised you guys didn't check the numbers yourselves before reposting this. But also in general, I think the 9070 XT, I really want this card to succeed. I actually use the 9070 XT in my main system right now. And I honestly think the 9070 as well as the 9070 XT, uh, two of AMD's probably the best cards that Radeon Group has ever released, period. I'm that impressed with the cards. But that said, I want AMD to do better on merit and merit alone. I don't want them to do better with I guess, inaccurate representation of the numbers. And so if, if they are getting an actual 9% increase across 1440p, I wanna actually see that and say, hey, this is actually a thing. And they're now beating the 5070 Ti. But unfortunately, I didn't see that in the numbers here today. However, it doesn't take away from the fact that AMD's drivers have come a long way. And I'm really impressed. I should, I'm gonna make an update video on my experience with the 9070 XT in my main system because it's just been a night and day difference from previous Radeon experiences that I've had. I think AMD are doing a lot of good things. There are still some little bugs for them to fix, which I could make suggestions for. But the last thing we'll talk about here is the actual differences. Why? Why are there differences between your testing and Harbor Unbox's testing? And here's where we tested the older drivers here today, and we tested on the exact same hardware. Now, they tested their stuff months ago on the review date, and here's where I'm not sure if a piece of hardware has changed in their system. And now they're testing with say a different SSD. And I do point to the SSD because it's actually one of the most underrated things in terms of extracting differences at 4K and maybe 1440p. And that's a thing called direct storage. It's enabled on Windows 11 only. And you also have to have the M.2 NVMe to support it. And that's, I think any NVMe pre 1.4 standard won't support this. But then if you've got an NVMe 2.0 standard drive, it will support direct storage. And then you also, after that, you have to make sure it's enabled too. And this can actually help in a lot of cases and it can account for some big gains, at least with particular titles. This is what I've found personally. So perhaps that could have been a problem on their setup as well as over time, there has been game updates as well. But like we saw with Plague Tale Requiem, there hasn't been a game update 
for a very long time. So when I saw these numbers were pretty much identical with review date driver and then after that, it makes it so that I think there was something different or something wrong with their test system. And that's all I can really point the differences down to in today's video. Though with all these numbers done, it actually won't change my recommendation at all with the cards that we're talking about. And that's the RX 9070 XT, as well as the RTX 5070 Ti, as well as the RX 9070. I'll throw that in there too, because I believe these three cards are the best cards from AMD and Nvidia this generation. And I believe from AMD period, I think this is the two best models they've ever released. But it doesn't change the fact that the MSRPs of these cards, if you can get either three of these cards for around MSRP, then they're gonna be a great purchasing decision. I think you're getting the best value out of the stack with either three of these models, but you're also getting some of the best efficiency in terms of the cards themselves. And you're also getting 16 gigabytes of VRAM. So they're very well balanced cards. They're geared up towards not just playing games with really high FPS now, but they're also going to be fine for years to come. Anyway guys, hope you enjoyed today's video. If you have any questions or comments about today's numbers, be sure to drop them down below. And with that aside, I'll catch you in another tech video very soon. Peace out for now, bye.